Looking out across the city, I have to ask myself, do I really know this city? Or is there something that I'm missing? In the years that I've been here, am I missing something? I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. Connolly, the great traveller, travelled the world twice over. You're lost in a hutong in Beijing. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Ian here in Beijing, and today I am out with Bruce. You may have seen Bruce on my channel a few times. He's a writer, photographer, um, broadcaster. He has been in Beijing for about 37 years, and this morning I said to him, "Wherever you want to go, Bruce, let's." jump on a taxi and go and see an area that maybe you've not seen for a while. You wanted to come here into the, the local Hutong area just off of Tiananmen Square. When you, when you brought uh, your tour groups to these kind of areas, you couldn't get away and they would simply, you know, home in on these places. You can't get away, you know, just... <laughs> <laughs> We are in the most fascinating area. This is uh, Yang, Mei, Yang Mei Zhu. And Yang Mei Zhu was part of the western Tiananmen or Dashalar area, where you had all this mixture of little, little houses, shops, commercial buildings, financial buildings, very cheap hotels, all crammed into this little, little area here, south of the former inner city, the former Ming Dynasty city walls. So, we had the outer city just to the north of us there, right you're up towards Tiananmen. That's the. So the, Tiananmen uh, Square is just over there, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, literally if you're standing rooftops here, just look down on, on the on the Tiananmen. Mm, Somebody coming by. Like, what is he doing? He's got a problem with some of the cars um. in the This is why they banned them because it, you get because you get. Cars go both directions, they can't get past. They can't go anywhere, yeah. Careless. And nobody gives away, well, he's, he's going to give away. I mean, I've seen them sometimes refusing to give away. It, it just becomes total madness. Chaos, chaos. This was where a lot of the love I see, the ordinary people lived. Um, there's also quite a lot of uh, traders, um, shopkeepers, uh, you know, handymen. This is where all the work was done because they, when you went north of the the city walls into the inner city. There's no commerce up there. It's the palaces, the, 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 the green government buildings of the, the Qing Dynasty. Uh, so the commerce was down here because you couldn't have any commerce in what was the, the royal city. Mm. And yet all the people from the palaces would come down here to do the shopping. <laughs> and um, this is where you get the best food, the best uh, bakeries. Uh, and it, it's it became very famous for for, for silk, for um, jewelry. Have, have you seen it change much? Mm -hmm. Tourists. Yeah. yeah. It, <laughs> um, it used to be, when I came here, it was only the local people. Mm. Now, these areas become very popular with visitors who want to see a touch of the, the old Beijing. For example, if you've been to Xi'an. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, in Xi'an, you know, you've got the, the old quarter, the Muslim area. Mm. Well, it's just like walking back in time. And uh, it's crowded with people, they love it. So here, when you're at the holidays, these areas are packed with visitors coming in who want to get a feel of what the city was like. Because, you know, if you go up to a uh, place at like San Mateen or CBD, we go about, you can be anywhere in the world. You know, it's very futuristic, modern architecture. It's, it's the modern China, it's the new China. But this is the old China. Mm. And people want to feel, feel and see what China was like. So you come here and you get a bit of a feel of it. Although this is not particularly old, it's um, 19th, early 20th century, compared to the Hutongs up um, near the Shuja Hive, which go back hundreds of years. This area, 
I always felt, compared to the, the northerly heat mm. I always felt this area was more vibrant, it was more lively, um, much more activity, because the activities you see here, a lot of the street activities, they don't exist anymore in the northern heat homes, they all been kind of gentrified, uh, so a bit. Here, they've kept the, the living entity, the, the, the whole living feel of the city. It makes it very interesting for people like us to come and see. And I've always really loved it. In fact, when I worked with the radio station, people used to think that um, I would end up living at Dash LR or, or at oh, yeah. John Gulo, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I just felt that if you're living in a little house here, you could get the real feel of Beijing. Uh, you could be out writing the journals, writing the, the story of life here, the local people, the food, you know, the sounds, the noises. You're losing yourself in your memories, my friend. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, thank, thank goodness I've got the photographs in that show mm. a lot of the Beijing, what it was like. And funny enough, nowadays, many Beijingers really do like to see my photographs. Mm. Like the younger ones who don't remember the, the early days were born later. Pulled it down, and what they did that was wrong in Glasgow was they split up communities. Mm. So, you mentioned from Chapel, the Chapel was made up of people from all over Glasgow. It was not a harmonious group, say, from Partick or Kelvin Hall. And it, so it was difficult to get a cohesion. But it was in the old areas, you had this community spirit. Mm. This was the same here in Beijing. The older areas, where it was low rise, kids used to play out in the streets, and um, people had their doors open, just wander around. And the much greater community feeling today, like the West, we built all high rise um, residential towers, something up to 40, 50 floors. <laughs> people don't know each other, mm. except some of the old ones who come down to mix in the garden areas. But it's not the same community, mm, mm. but that's progress. And I know today in China, there are many people, planner, you know, planners, um, developers, who are thinking about the future and how we've got to preserve mm. some of the, the character that makes China so special. Mm. Because who wants to simply have somewhere that resembles anywhere in the world? Yeah carbon copy. Uh -huh. London's the same as Glasgow, the same as Paris, the same as Beijing, the same as Shanghai, New York, Sydney, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Why do people come down here? Because they yeah. love to have this feeling yeah. of... I love the wee coffee shops and the art and stuff. Well, let's go have another look around. Aye, right, let's go. Aye. Otherwise, I've been up over here. Aye. I'm not going back to Glasgow. I'm just going to stay here. <laughs> Who wants the rain? Aye. Wow, oh, longer than him. Maybe one longer. You're the longer one. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, maybe 1987. Oh. 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 Oh, the way. Oh, the way. That was the first one. The first one. So, Beijing, Guangzhou. Beijing, Guangzhou. Beijing, Guangzhou, then Shanghai. Shanghai. No, no, Shanghai. 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 Beijing, Beijing was fascinating. Like, each of us. It was not what it was. Well, Beijing. Yeah, it was very interesting. You know, a bit to... I'm sure you heard me take that very tell him this is... Well, be just mm. well, she had been low dash a lot. Yeah, well, by seeing. 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 Uh, 
Not often dressed. Not, 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 oh, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh. Not, not, no. Okay. I, you know, I have mayo, mayo. Mayo. <laughs> 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 Bye-bye. 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 B
the students really, really loved it. Your first experience of China is so different. Now, we stayed in this hotel because it was a, a youth-friendly hotel. I didn't want to go and stay in big four-star hotels in anonymous areas, you know, in the city centre, which, you know, okay, they were lovely and great, but you're surrounded in areas that could easily be, uh, they could easy, easily be anywhere in the world. But by staying here, you're staying in a part of, oh, Beijing, love Beijing. I've been the tour guide for Beijing, so I'm taking them out from here, walk along the, the alleys, uh, up to public, we use public transport a lot. And uh, you know, introduce them to Beijing, and go to local restaurants with them, and it, it worked out really, really good. I was in my element just talking about Beijing and mm. sharing all the experiences with them. Here they were in this local Beijing neighbourhood, and they thought it was great. Mm. And, I, and they told me this is far better than staying in one of the, the great brand new luxury hotels. I say I agree with you. Mm. Was it the summer? Eight point five degrees. Thirty eight. Uh -huh. So you come from Glasgow. Yeah. And you come here in 38 degrees, why? And you know, at that time, uh, in, yeah, yeah, in yeah. late June, early July, the humidity starts going yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for some of them, uh, it was actually quite difficult at the beginning because they'd not been used to it. Because yeah. I wanted to be the, the guide. I, I talked with the, the agents about this. I wanted to be mostly local. So there were times you had to have um, the official guides, like for example, going into the city mm. and Temple of Heaven, that had to be uh, organised, you know, through the agencies. But other, otherwise, I wanted to do it. Why? Because I didn't want to go on the shopping trips, which too often happens on tours. You know, you see a bit of uh, tourism, then they take you to, you know, local, you know, restaurants that are just catering for tourists, or they're taking you to shops. I didn't want, I wanted the people to experience local Beijing, discover the Beijing that I knew. I wanted to make it relevant for the youngsters and relate to Glasgow and relate to my own experiences. And, and so it worked out great. And by the time we got to Kudong Airport in Shanghai, I was feeling very emotional when we said goodbye to them all, you know. Every one of them come up with shaking hands, giving big cuddles, you know. <laughs> oh, God, I was so bad. So it, it was a great learning opportunity for them. And to see it firsthand and not to see the China that we, you know, see kind of reported in, in the media, mm. but to see the real China, the China of the love I sing, the ordinary people, the local district, and to meet the people, which was very important. It's just madness to, to be driving here. I get stuck in jams. Senseless. Get the car into the car park underneath the Taiku Lee Sanitary. Mm. The car is a stretch for a long distance, they're going nowhere. There's no parking space, but they sit there, sit there, sit there. You sound like a grumpy old man now. I am. Um. <laughs> in the old days, in my early days, you wouldn't see young uh, Chinese people coming here looking at the buildings, photographing them. Mm. Now you're seeing this because they want to know about their cultural heritage mm. and they want to see about the past and to discover much more of the city, not to think it, to think that if, you know, they don't think that everything's just like Sandy Town mm. or great big shopping malls, but it's actually a great long history mm. that you've got here. Like I say, if you're a puppet then, the modern bits of the city, they you know, all been picked up in the Mercedes and so on. So here, you know, they're living the natural life. I don't know if you come to the Tanner School, you know the yellow hats. I think the schools are coming out, eh? Yeah. A street that uh, goes back a long, long history. Uh, it's where they made glazed tiles and like that. And watch all, see all the wings coming down. This is Tanner Huto. <laughs> I remember um, when I had uh, Professor Walker and his wife out here, up from these bird cages on the wall here, really quiet little corner. This old dear, full of the rest of her life, come and say, Oh, Lord, why can't you? Lord, why can't you? You know, people, less are looking, quite fascinated. We were looking at the, you know, the traditional way of life, and mm. she was fascinated mm. trying to work out what we do, why are we coming here? You know? mm. You've got this little courtyard entrance, you've got the tree. You know, this is 
wheel facing. I do know, it's just good, is it? Yes, they do coat. They do, do hurt do yeah. for the, yeah. the birds. Yeah. Uh, I remember in my, my early days, I used to think there was low flying jets. I thought, wait a minute, jets can't fly over Beijing and they kept hearing it. It was the, the birds. Because one of the birds had a, it would have a whistle. Mm. You know, they have a flock of birds and one of them had the, 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 the whistle. Mm. So when they fly, it, it's like a low flying jet or something, yeah. So the, the, the guy that owned the birds would know, we could see them. But also, I think it was a kind of way of the birds all keeping together, you know. Mm. Oh, so it's like a sound, so the birds actually fly in a flock yeah. together. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it, when I first heard it, it was odd, you know. Then they kind of realised it was all part of the... <laughs> You're lost in a hutong in Beijing. I tell you, can you find a way through these? <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> right, right. Um, I, think, I, I think I know where we are. Um, now it's coming back to me. I think we come to an area, turn around bends, we come to a place with a tree. I think it's coming back to me now. <laughs> There's a lot of trees. I'm going to get you some uh, food soon. Aye, well, let's, let's get to... <laughs> I mean you, I'm saying you. I mean me. Aye, let's get to the, the stock exchange, so that's, that's the... It's a good, it's a good start. Don't get there. <laughs> that's a local bar. <laughs> <laughs> Central China. Securities Exchange State site. So the old stock exchange. Right, they've got a sign up private. Thank you. Dead, but they didn't see it. Let's look at the site for a minute. I think because they get fed up with it. They probably sold my photographs and people photographing and seeing it. These are actually good apartments, man. I stayed in one bit taller than that, mm. 194 building, and it was from the 1980s. I loved it. You know, there's a real community. Yeah. Um, but these were pride and joy of people who people maybe lived in the hutongs, and, so, and suddenly they get these where you had um, inside toilet, you had uh, hot water, mm. uh, he central heating. Sounds like moving from the Gorbals in to Glasgow Drumchavo. to Drumchavo, yeah. yeah. You the coal fire, the heat and everything from that coal yeah, fire. Yeah, same as the house we had when I was a kid in Drumchapel. I think I'm getting closer to knowing this city, but yet I still have so much left to explore. Ian here in Beijing, wishing you all the best, urging you to take care of yourself, take care of your family, and as always, Peace out. Catch you in another video soon.